Hi, and welcome back to Morgellons Discussion and Microscopy Videos. I'm your host, Jeremy Murphy, and I want to say thank you to everybody who sent me the kind feedback recently. And everybody who contacted me earlier in the week, I definitely appreciate your thoughts and your feelings and your prayers. Uh, we do have a lot of division going on in the Morgellons community, and that's exactly what I want to talk about today. Uh, you know, regarding the Charles Holman Foundation, I don't, I'm not associated with them. I have volunteered for them in the past, and if they need anything done on the YouTube channel, I'll take care of it for them if asked. Uh, but they're having some problems, specifically on their Twitter page. Uh, I don't know why it's so hard to fix this, but they incorrectly reported that Reuters did not include any scientific information associating Morgellons with an infectious disease and that's not the case at all that's not true they're having people get mad at Reuters because they're having them think that Reuters didn't include any scientific information when in fact in their article about Morgellons not being associated with horse worms and nanoparticles which is true in masks in surgical masks that's all true they included a link to the history of Morgellons from dis, uh, delusion to definition by by various scientific uh, researchers in in their article. And so I don't know why the Charles Holman Foundation, you know, it's obvious to make a mistake and make an oversight, but I've personally called it to their attention several times. So at least on their Twitter page, they have a serious error that's not good to just leave alone. I think that and if you think also that they should get on their Twitter and go ahead and issue an apology to Reuters, please let them know. I think they should because that's an egregious error. Reuters is trying to help us out by including that information, getting it to a broad audience. And for whatever reason, the Charles Holman Foundation on Twitter just refuses to apologize for mistakenly telling people on their page that Reuters did not include any scientific information when they included a, a, one of those valued and cherished uh, A list of scientific researches that shows Morgellons is associated with an infectious condition. The other thing I want to talk about is <laughs> I got the um, Morgellons survey preliminary results right here, and I just wanted to give you guys a couple of ideas of what. We found out about it. It looks like the most common diagnosis based on the preliminary results was DOP, delusions of parasitosis. Uh, you can see that atopic dermatitis was also high on the list. Uh, surprisingly, a few people did get diagnosed with Morgellons and Lyme disease. You can check that out. I'm going to leave the link in the description below. Uh, we went into what kind of symptoms patients experience, and it seemed like the most prevalent was the joint pain and the chronic fatigue and of course the fibers in the skin because this is a Morgellons centric study um, some of the other questions we asked were do you have Morgellons has Morgellons impacted your ability to work and you can see that in a lot of people a big portion it has affected them somewhat uh, we asked people you know do you sometimes personally, do you know someone personally besides yourself who has Morgellons? And the majority of people there said no. Are you currently under the care of a physician? And most people said no. So we have some data here. This right here specifically is based on about 600 people who completed the survey from start to finish. They put in their email address at the very end. And we're only counting those people. We had about 1,500 entrants who uh, started the survey, but only 600 are included in this right here, this final thing. All right. So the last thing I want to talk about is the Morgellons uh, advocacy efforts. You know, I want to be clear, and I have been clear on this channel for several times that it's not healthy to get involved in a toxic environment. And you've got a lot of these groups that are just hateful and resentful at government health agencies and doctors in general without looking at all the good things that they accomplish. 
You know, right now the CDC is focused and concentrated on the coronavirus. They don't have time to deal with Morgellons, but they've already updated their website for Lyme disease, which if you have Morgellons, that's what you're dealing with, Lyme disease. So really at that point, it's not so much a matter of the CDC and blaming them and focusing constant daily hatred on them, but it's about petitioning your local and regional health agencies to adopt what the CDC is saying on their website. Because the CDC is saying 500,000 cases of Lyme disease are diagnosed and treated every year. It's in every state. But you still have some states where doctors go, no, that's only up there in the Northeast, you know, Connecticut and Maine and Massachusetts and all that. But that's not true. Lyme disease is in every state in, in the country. So what I recommend is petitioning your local health agencies, getting involved with some Lyme disease organizations uh, who are making available the resources to be able to contact your local and federal uh, representatives uh, to get more funding for Lyme disease, uh, to be able to develop an infrastructure for Lyme disease. You can currently go see a Lyme disease specialist, but Lyme disease specialist ought to be the norm. You know, that ought to be what every person experiences when they go to see a doctor. And it's just going to take a different kind of training. But it's not going to take hating on the CDC every single day, you know, going through some kind of ritualistic, just stay away from any kind of cult toxic environments because you will get sucked up and your attitude will start to suffer. You have to have a positive mental attitude to be able to make it through this situation. Lyme disease is a tough disease. And if you can't stay positive about it, it's real easy to fall along the way. What do you guys think? Let me know. Leave a comment down below. I appreciate everybody who's liked these videos, who shared them out with their friends. And we're just going to keep on going, you know. I don't have anything against the Charles Holman Foundation. Uh, they've been very beneficial in providing the resources. However, it's hard for me to share those resources with my audience when they have something blatantly wrong and misinformative up on their Twitter account. Uh, regardless of whoever is managing that account or what their opinions are about being a apologetic when they're wrong somebody needs to step up and leadership needs to hold accountable this situation so that it doesn't appear that they're being misinformative in any way all right i hope you guys had a great time and we'll talk to you soon